This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. The subject, in a couple of examples, is moment of a couple. A couple refers to two forces that are equal magnitude, parallel to each other, and have opposite sense or direction. A um, little example here talks about how, so I've got a force, a vector F, force vector in one direction, negative F in the other direction, and they are parallel to each other, separated by some distance D, we'll talk about later. So the resultant of those two, the sum of the forces, is zero. F plus negative F is equal to zero. They counteract each other. So I can say a moment couple tries to rotate a body. It does not try to translate a body because the force is what translates it and the moment is what tries to rotate it. It's a pure moment is a force couple. So there's two ways of evaluating it. So in this cluttered diagram right here, I've got on an XYZ three-dimensional coordinate system, I've got two vectors, one applied at point B that I'll call F, and one applied at point A in the opposite direction called negative F. Um, there's two ways of evaluating a force couple, really, probably more, but two main ways. One is to take some point, in this case the origin, and sum the moments caused by each one of those two forces, F and negative F, about point O. So here would be my position vector RB from O to B, RA from O to A, and I would just do the cross product and add them up and get a moment. The other way to look at it is R, I can take the moment of one of the forces involved in the couple about some point on the line of action of the other of the other force in the couple system. And so in this case, I'll just take the moment of F about point A. Then I have a position vector R B over A, tip over tail. I cross that with F. And, you know, just it goes without saying, but I will say it anyway, negative F creates no moment about point A because it passes through point A. Anyway, so I evaluate this as RBA cross F. And going back to the first part of this chapter where we're talking about another way of evaluating a cross product is the scalar RBA times F times the sine of this angle theta between their lines of action. And finally, I have this shortest distance that I've drawn in green here, D. It's a perpendicular to both forces, which are parallel to each other. So that's the shortest distance between those two vectors. Finally, summarizing, the moment of a couple depends on the force and the D shortest perpendicular distance. It does not matter where it's located on a rigid body or does it matter about any point of application as long as I have a force two forces equal and opposite and a shortest distance D I can move it around on a rigid body and it creates the same effect it tries to rotate it here's a 2D example I have a plate shown in black it's three feet tall and four feet wide points A, B, C, D in each corner. I have at C, I've got a 100 pound force up and to the right, 60 degrees from the horizontal. Over here at point A, I have down and to the left, 100 pound force, 60 degrees from the horizontal. I want to know what the couple moment of that, the moment couple of that, those two forces is. So it's, um, I can just take the moment of this force applied at point C about point A and that'll give me one way to calculate it. 
I divided this force up into two components, 100 sine of 60 in the y, 100 cosine of 60 in the x direction. This is just a scalar solution, so I'm not going to worry about my signs of this. I'm just going to worry about the direction of rotation that these two create. So I've got 100 sine of 60, my Fy, times my x distance, 4 feet. And that's trying to rotate counterclockwise. Then I've got my um, x component, 100 cosine of 60, times my y distance of 3. It's trying to rotate clockwise, so it's the opposite of this. So I said this value minus this value. Work out the math. I get it's equal to 196.4. The positive means that it's in the same direction of rotation as the, the bigger number of these two that I calculated. So it's counterclockwise. My shortest perpendicular distance is real easy to figure. My moment divided by my force, 196.4 divided by 100, is 1.96 feet is that perpendicular shortest distance. The other way to figure these things is to just take and sum the moments about point B. Well, this force, we've already worked out the components, so it's just the opposite or the same uh, magnitudes, just different directions opposite. The x is to the left and the y is, to the, is down. Um, when I'm summing moments, I note that this x force from this vector, force vector, applied to point C, creates no moment about point B because it passes through it. Same thing for the y component of this vector. It passes through point B. So the only thing I'm left with is the y component of this vector, 100 sine of 60, times 4 feet, 100, 100 times sine of 64, and then the x component of this vector, which is 100 cosine 60, times that y distance, that shortest distance. So do the math, I get the same exact numbers as I've got up here. Same kind of rotation, this is counterclockwise, this is clockwise, so I get the same number. Two different ways of skinning a cat. Finally, I have a 3D example, which is XYZ, the force is negative 3J plus 4K kilonewtons over here, and it's applied at point A, which is at 300. Zero, zero. Point B, 040, is applied this negative force. 3J minus 4K kilonewtons. And three dimensions to solve these things, I've just about got to go to a determinant. So I've got RBA. I'm going to take the moment of the negative F applied at point B about point A. So I call that position vector RB over A. I figure it by subtracting from zero from these B coordinates, the A coordinates, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, 4 minus 0 is 4, and so forth. So now I've got everything, because if my force is in Cartesians, my unit vector, my uh, position vector is in Cartesian form, ready to plug into a determinant. So there I've got I, J, and K. Remember, unit on the top, position in the middle, force on the bottom. Evaluate it. I times 4 times negative 4 minus 0. Similarly, negative J. Evaluate with that little determinant. Plus K. Negative 3 times 3 minus 4 times 0. Do the math. I get negative 16I minus 12J minus 9K kilonewton meters. The uh, scalar of that is just the square root of the sum of the squares, 16, 12, and 9, 21.9 kilonewton meters. Finally, I want to know my shortest perpendicular distance, d, which I've drawn in green there, is the moment divided by the force, the scalar magnitudes of those. So I know this, I need to figure out what the force is, which is a square root of 3 squared, or 4 squared, 5. 21.9 divided by 5 is 4.39 meters.